Welcome to module ED2. Um, this is going to be the video lecture about the edit distance algorithm, so actually computing the minimum edit distance. So before we jump into the details of the algorithm, let's just uh, start off slow and let's look at an example. So let's take these particular source and target strings. The source string is gumbo, has five characters. And the target string is gamble, has six characters. And we want the sequence of edits that will take us from the source to the target. So in this case, um, I think it's fairly easy to see that the G should get aligned with the cost of zero. <laughs> you can replace the A with the U with a cost of two. M aligns with M with the cost of zero, B aligns with B with the cost of zero, and now you have a few choices. Uh, you can align L with O and then insert this last E over here. So you can see we had a cost of inserting E, that's one, replacing O with L, that's two, replacing U with A, that's two. So we should get a distance of five. And um, so let's see how we can compute that. Um, uh, notice that the sequence of edits uh, is again not going to be unique. Uh, but the number we get, which is the minimum edit distance, is going to be unique. There's going to be a minimum edit distance um, to take one string to the other. Okay, so let's uh, look at our goal. Our goal in this um, example is to find the value of the minimum edit distance. So D, we represent that as D 6 comma 5. 6 because the target has 6 characters, 5 because the source has 5 characters. We want to find D 6 comma 5 recursively using values of D i j for smaller values of i j. So i is less than or equal to 6, so j less than or equal to 5. Uh, and let's look at a concrete example and look at D4, 3 and see how we can build um, the minimum edit distance for 4, 3. Notice that 4, 3 would uh, represent this part of the problem. So it's a sub-problem uh, that we want to solve and then once we understand that we'll see how to put it all together to find D6,5. Okay, so here uh, is a fragment. Uh, so each time we're going to look at some prefix of the target and some prefix of the source. So in this case, we're going to look at one to four of the target, one to three of the source. And we want to compute D of four comma three. So that's what we want. And the first case uh, that we consider is a case where we are substituting B4 for M3. So what's the situation here? Well, if you want to align B4 to M3, that means we are assuming that we've done all of the edit distance computation for the prefix that occurs before that substitution. So we are assuming that uh, GAM and GU we know what the minimum edit distance cost for that is going to be, and we're going to extend it with this cost for substituting B4 for M3. Okay, um, so we can use this previously stored value for three comma two, which we've assumed we've computed before, and uh, of course we would then be computing this recursively until we reach some base case. Um, and in this case, the cost is a cost of substituting a B for M and the minimum edit distance cost for the prefix uh, 3 comma 2. So this part of the string over there that's uh, shown over there. Okay, so that's uh, straightforward enough. And um, so in general, for substitution, if I have di comma j, so you can see here we had four comma three and we use three comma two 
to get the cost for 4 comma 3 if it's a substitution and so in this um, in this case di comma j depends on di minus 1 j minus 1 plus whatever this cost of substitution in um, the Levenstein distance, the cost of substitution, if the characters are different, will be 2. If the characters are the same, the cost will actually be 0 because there's no cost for aligning the same character to, in the source to the same character in the target. Okay, so that's actually the first case. But that's not the only case that could happen. Um, so this one uh, says, well, in order to compute 4 comma 3 I need to compute 3 comma 2 before I compute 4 comma 3. There's another case that can happen which is we want to insert uh, B4. So in this case we've actually already computed this prefix. GAM and GUM have been the minimum added distance has been computed and now we're add, wanting to add uh, B4 and so this is a case where we are inserting uh, B4 so it's not actually aligned to any character in the source it just gets added in and in this case as you can see we want to use the previously stored value for D3,3 because that's what this circle part represents is the minimum added distance for GAM uh, aligned to GUM So that's just going to be three. The minimum added distance cost three comma th stored in three comma three, plus the cost of inserting a b, yeah, which is one, in Levenstein distance. And so in general, for substitution, you have, so we have four comma three taking a value from three comma three. So it's d i j is taking a value from d i minus one j plus the cost of insertion. So this is fairly very analogous to the case of substitution um, and that gives us um, another cell that needs to be computed before we can compute 4 comma 3. You can see we need the value of 3 comma 3 in order to compute 4 comma 3. So it's either 3 comma 2 or 3 comma 3 that can uh, give us uh, the minimum added distance. And there's a third case, and the third case is that we want to delete M3. So in this case, we have actually already aligned this part of the string here. That's another prefix of target and source that's possible. And you can see that corresponds to 4, 2. And we want to use that previously stored minimum edit distance we computed in 4, 2. And in this case, uh, it's going to be whatever we stored in 4.2 plus the cost of deleting an M. So notice that M, in this case, just gets elided from the source string. Uh, and it's not actually al aligned to any character in the target. So it's considered a deletion. And in general, uh, in this, as you can see, 4.3 gets a value uh, up, you know, takes the value from 4.2 in order to uh, compute its value. So dij gets uh, the minimum cost uh, added distance from dij minus 1 plus the cost of deletion. So in, in this um, setting now we have these three cells. So we need to compute this, this, and this before we can compute this cell. Uh, 4 comma 3 and there are these three possibilities and we want the minimum edit distance so we always take the minimum of these three options and now if you uh, keep iterating this algorithm further you can see that d43 will have an effect further down um, its value can be then used uh, reused uh, to compute the values of larger substrings of source and target. So that's the idea behind this algorithm. So let's just state it um, a bit more formally. So you have 
uh, a target string t1 through tn and a source string s1 through sm. We want to find d of nm recursively, where n is the length of the target source and m is the length of the source. And we, this is exactly what we just saw using that example. Uh, this is just laid out in general. So uh, the this case is a case where you have substitution, and this case is where you have insertion into the target string, and this case is where you have deletion from the source string. So these are the three uh, recursive uh, cases which allow you to uh, compute larger and larger substrings using um, previously computed minimum added distances. And the base cases are very important. So the obvious base case is you know, finding the alignment between an empty string and an empty string uh, as a prefix of the source and target and that's just zero because that, it doesn't cost anything. Um, but these two uh, base cases are not so obvious. These are aligning, uh, so this first case, which is di0, is taking a target string of length i and aligning it to a prefix of the source string, which is empty. And we need that because in some of the cases, the, um, the d values that we need uh, in order to compute this here might involve uh, j minus 1, for example, could be 0. And that's actually fairly intuitive, so it's just saying, well, if you want to insert i characters, you pay a cost of 1 for each character. Um, so if you have a target string of length i, you want to align to an empty string, you just insert i characters. So that's what this is, just adding up the cost. Essentially, it's a length of the target string, um, you know, so far. Um, and the situation is analogous here, 0 comma j just says, well, how can you take a source string of length j and align it to an empty string? Well, you just delete the j characters, and that just gets added up one uh, deletion cost at a time until you get the length of the source string is, uh, is the cost of aligning to the empty string. Um, so let's look at this in terms of the pseudocode. It's fairly easy. So you get um, uh, a matrix uh, D that we want to create. So one thing to notice about the pseudocode is we're not actually going to do it recursively. We're just going to create a matrix and fill it up in such a way that all of the smaller substrings are in place before the larger substrings get computed. And we control that using a for loop, a nested for loop in this case. Um, and that um, makes things a bit more efficient because we don't have to create recursive calls. If you do create recursive calls, you have to make sure that you memorize what was uh, the previous value so you don't recompute it every time. Um, and these are the base cases, D0, uh, 0, 0, and these are the base cases for the insertion and the deletion. And these base cases, uh, I think, will become clearer when you look at an example of this pseudocode. And then this is a fairly straightforward um, nested loop, which computes dij recursively based on smaller values of ij. So it takes these values and computes larger, larger substrings of the target and source. So just like what we saw in the pseudocode. So let's look at, so in this um, pseudocode, uh, the minimum added distance is then the, the D and M. That's where it's going to be stored. So let's see how this pseudocode would uh, look like on a sample 